The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. This isn't in my, my script, but that line about not being drunk because it's 9 o'clock in the morning always makes me chuckle, like, yes? There sure is a lot of spirit talk in today's readings. And that's a good thing because it's Pentecost, the day we celebrate the outward visible sign of God's spirit with us, in us, and among us. In the gospel reading, from John, we hear Philip say to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Ugh, can't you just feel it like fingernails on a chalkboard? Can't you just feel Jesus cringe? Can you imagine how disappointed he is? Philip has been with Jesus for three years. How can Philip possibly ask this? Do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? That we are one? I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Now this is important stuff, right? The one who believes in Jesus will also do the works that Jesus did, and in fact will do greater works than these. I know we might gloss over this verse, but I believe it. The Spirit comes and fills all the believers. That's you, and that's me, and this power that was given to us was for one purpose, to show forth the glory of God. That's what it's meant to be used for. You know, let your light shine. Now, I taught a class in food a few years ago, more than a few years ago, and at the end of each class I said, you'll do greater works than I do because I'm going to the Father. And someone came up to me after class one day and said, do you think we'll feed the 5,000? And I said, we already have 300 at a time. 
you know, God is alpha and omega. So time is all time and no time at all. So for us to feed 5,000 at 300 apiece is all the same as if we did it all at once. So yes, I do believe that we will do greater works than Jesus did because he's with God and he's advocating for us. Can you believe it? Us feeding 5,000, turning water into 120 gallons of the finest wine, embracing the power of forgiveness. Be given the power to control the wind and the waves. How about the power to love our enemies or maybe even those we disagree with? The power to love as a community, like a bonfire that people are attracted to because they see it and they want to know what's happening over there. On Pentecost, the power of the Spirit was given to all believers to show forth God's glory. Jesus told us, you, yes, you and me are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine. Let your bonfire shine so that all may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Now, when the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. That's a pretty incredible statement. Think about it for a minute. Do you think that Jesus' followers might have been intimidated by the recent events and maybe been a bit afraid to gather, right? Remember, it's only been 50 days since Jesus' arrest and crucifixion. At that moment... At any moment, the doors could burst open and they would be arrested and maybe suffer the same consequences as Jesus. Can you imagine what this must have been like? This group was, that was gathered is about the same size as this community. Think about it for a minute. Here we are doing God's work, sharing in common, our lives, our resources, our power, our work. We're powered by the Spirit, helping the most vulnerable among us. When all of a sudden, our leader is arrested. And what really amounts to a kangaroo court is found guilty, and then in short order, without appeal, is executed. Right? Given this scenario, do you think you'd really keep coming back to this place? meeting here with this group in constant prayer? Or maybe you might give second thought to ditching the whole concept. But here Jesus' followers are, huddled together in an upper room, 120 of them, male and female, young and old, slave and free, those who believed that Jesus was who he said he was, putting their lives on the line can't you hear them talking? Jesus really was who he said he was. The incarnate, the son of God. He told us to wait right here for the advocate, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to wait till the advocate comes. And suddenly from heaven, there's a sound like a violent wind, and it filled our entire house where we were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among us, and a tongue rested on each of them, kind of like these candles. It kind of makes us like human candles, right? Where God's light can shine. All of us, all of us, are filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other languages as the Spirit gives us ability now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered trying to figure out what on earth was going on, what all the commotion was about. They were be bewildered because each one of them 
no matter what their native language was, heard the disciples talking to them in their own language. And what did these devout Jews hear? Not just any small talk, no, no. They heard Jesus' followers speaking about God's deeds of power. What would this be like at Claremont this morning? There are many languages and dialects spoken near our church, right? You just have to go out the street and, and almost anyone you meet might be from a different country and have a different language. This is similar to what was going on the first Pentecost in Jerusalem nearly 2,000 years ago. What if all of a sudden there's a mighty wind and all of us are suddenly able to talk to everyone we meet in their own native language? But, and there's always a catch, right? The only thing we can talk about is God's deeds of power. The mighty things God has done for us and for us and for those we pray for. God knows each one of us and desires that everyone knows God, the one that loves them, that loves us. God knows that most people will not wait, will not, show, will not slow down to learn God's language, right? Most of us do not speak burning bush or rushing wind. Oh, that bush is on fire. That's kind of weird. Or the wind is blowing. That's nice. We usually don't ask where it's going. We just continue walking on by, not veering off the path. So God finds a way to communicate with us. Is God using you to spread God's story? Speaking through you to the people out there, in the street, in the grocery store, in school, to tell them about God's deeds of power? To tell them so that they feel it, that God loves them. God knows that you know their language that you know how to talk with them, that you know the vernacular, right? You know how to talk baseball or, or academies or maybe VFW or toddler. Some of you actually know Twitter. I'm not that fond of that stuff, but some of you do. And you could be spreading God's message through that too. And any of the other languages we speak, the very customized vernacular of our day, God can use us to tell of God's deeds of power and love through whatever language we speak. Our neighbors, whether rapper or engineer or toddler or harried mom, all speak their own language. And the Spirit gives us the ability to speak to them in their own language, to tell about God. In the last days, it will be God declares. And this may be the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams upon even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Now, this is all well and good, but remember, these people were huddled together with enough, just enough belief to overcome their fear of arrest and even death. Was this just some hocus-pocus 2,000 years ago? Are we also those who believe that Jesus is who he says he is? Emmanuel. God with us, God's very presence in this bread and wine, in this community, the body of Christ for the world, then we huddle together on a Sunday morning just like those of 2,000 years ago 
because we, like the earliest followers, also believe that whoever has seen Jesus has seen the Father, has been with the Father. We are the ones who believe in Jesus, and we will do the works that he did. In fact, we will do greater works, not just for fun and games, no, our works, like Jesus' works, are to show forth the glory of God. May God fill us this day and always with the Holy Spirit and set us on fire for his purpose. Amen.